All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the Monster Sanctuary Tournament Circuit. We've got a match for you today in the loser's bracket of the underpowered tournament. Going to be between PT Braunschweig and Citrine. So as you can see on this screen, we've got the restricteds that they've each chosen for their teams. This is a ban list format. Um, a lot of monsters are restricted, so you can only have one restricted on your team. On this yeah, team, they're awesome. Brulu uh -huh. and uh, Dragon Grand. Yeah, and um, on uh, on on PD side, we've got a very uh, death blow oriented team, which is built around spreading debuffs. And on uh, Citrine side, we have a buff dragon based team. Uh, it's probably going to be relying on Scorch to spread um, spread buffs around quickly, so that its damage dealers Dra Draco Grand, Inky Nanka, and um, Draco Noir can can pick up some kills. And I think we, we see, see a see strong opening turn there. Yeah, um, Death Blow really gets going quickly um, without good debuff removal. I mean, there's there's Restore and Scorch, but that's only one target at a time. It's going to be very hard for PD to keep up, uh, for um, Citrain to keep up, I think. Yeah, like, you've got the the passive on Draconov that makes the, the debuffs less effective, which can help somewhat, especially in, in slower, stallier teams. But I think PT's team has enough aggression here that that's not going to be as much of a factor. Yeah, and with Stolby and Spectre in the back line, there's also some chance for uh, revive shenanigans. Yeah. Um, especially with um, Rainbow Blob's passive debuff spreading, it's going to be very hard to uh, clean this up, I think. Yeah, and of course, with the latest update, Rainbow Blob got Phoenix Affinity, which has made a huge jump in its viability. Yeah, yeah, it used to be very, very squishy, easy to kill. And uh, it's it's still not the tankiest thing in the world, but especially now without um, any form of debuff removal on Citrine's side, it's going to be very difficult. Huge damage from Ninky there, though. Nearly taking out the Soul Bee without the full combo meter to benefit it. Yeah, Legion, um, Legion can spread. Um, Buffs really quickly. Although Gruul is doing its job cleaning debuffs, spreading uh, clean buffs, spreading debuffs very quickly. Um, yeah, Gruul is showing why it's uh, a restricted one in this game, definitely. Yeah, it's also keeping the team healthy with the three regen stacks that it just passively applies to, to the entire team. Yeah, and then of course the light shift on Rainbow Blob allows it to spread every other buff as well. Yeah. Yeah, Mass, Mystif uh, Mass Mystify has been, I guess, the biggest story of this patch. Either that or Tanuki. <laughs> yeah, kind of those two have been really the big winners in the last update. And we see uh, Drakenoir coming out here, which has a really good matchup now into debuff teams because it gets stronger with every debuff placed on it. But coming out this late in the game, uh, it's not really in a good position to take advantage of that. It's true. It does also have, I think, Anti-Curse, doesn't it? So that it yeah, weakens the debuff does, yeah. efficacy. So and I guess this, yeah. Yeah, it probably would have been a good lead, potentially, but maybe you don't want to risk losing it immediately the way Dracogran went down. Yeah. So it could have been uh, could have been good to bring Draconar out a little bit earlier in this match, I think, because I... That Draconov looks like it's just hanging by a thread right now. I don't think it's going to last a turn. I think even if Draconov goes down, even if Draconov stays up, as soon as the Draconoir went down there, I mean, that, that definitely called it. There's no damage left, really. Yeah, and, all yeah, and they, they got the full wipe that time. Yes, very impressive there. Uh, PT takes the commanding win there in game one. I think dragons might struggle a little in this format just because the best dragon, uh, Dracomer, is is banned. Yeah, I think it's it's still a very viable team in this format just because 
you do have a choice between Dracoquin and Dracazool because they're both restricted, but you still have Ninky and Ninky Nunley, which is a very, very strong duo. Yeah, yeah, they work well together. And PD's going a different direction with uh, a couple of core dragons with uh, Dracozul and Nicky Nanka. He's going for more of a sidekick buff spreading team. Yeah, this is um, like sidekick in general is kind of one of the stronger archetypes in this format just because it didn't take as many hits as a lot of other uh, archetypes did. And it's got a lot of different ways that it can choose to go. Here we've got more of a focus on enlightenment and and uh, Looks like there's a big emphasis on just multi-buffs in general, right? Because you've got yeah. uh, both Dracozul and um, Asura who, who have another multi-buff passive. Uh, yeah. and Monk as well. Uh, Draco's with a multi barrier, and then Asura and Mach with uh, multi glory. Um, but it looks like the sidekick team is gonna not really be able to break through this this might for on Citrine's side. Yeah, it takes it's up the Dodo, which is nice, but uh, that Mega Rock is sitting pretty right now. Yeah, it's so tanky once it gets set up. And it has such and, a good matchup into this team, too, right now with Leaf Slash. Yeah, with Leaf Slash, you can just ignore the high dodge that this team relies on to survive. Uh, with yeah, Boulder really Dust, too, it can... Yeah. Prowess, but you're getting hit every time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It also doesn't trigger Martial Prowess, which um, Azarak and Monk both have to spread buffs when dodging an attack. Oh, there we go. Oh, it did take it down. Yeah. Goblin Hood showing why it's such a strong DPS option. Yeah, is that a DPS Draco as well? I noticed the light shift. I'm assuming it is, because if you were running more of a supportive Draco Zool, I would think you would always, always go for blacksmithing bonus, right? Yeah, but wouldn't that mean there's four damage dealers between Ninky Naka and uh, Goblin Hood and Asura? Yeah. Well, with Sidekick, you can kind of get away with running almost everything as a flex DPS, right? So it could just be yeah. hedging your bets on that. That's true. Uh, there's also not really much healing on uh, PD's side on this team, aside from Monk. So I think that taking yeah. him down early is really going to help in like uh, an attrition battle. I mean, there, there's always the option to run healing on Azurak and Monk, but... Neither of them are guaranteed to run any healing moves at all. And yeah. Any other get it out. I think the opportunity cost with Monk is very high to run healing, but with with Azrak, you kind of have to lean into it if you want to invest in it. Yeah, I think Monk is definitely one of the uh, the best flex supports in terms of getting healing without giving up very much. Yeah. And now we see Darnation come in. And Darnation generally wants, in my opinion, I think wants to come in early so it can set up and, and get its age stacks going uh, and aim for, for team wipes. Uh, it's, it has double um, center of mass, making its AoE attacks much stronger, but it means that it struggles a little bit in single target damage, in my experience. Um, yeah, I think... So now when it... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, like Darnation, depending on how you build it, it can be very aggressive immediately. So... Judging by how it's been played here, I think this is probably more of an aggressive one with probably some single target options on it. Yeah, it's got uh, Godly Strikes the ult, but I don't see any other single target attacks maxed out. I guess that worked out. Yeah. So it looks like Citrine's taking this on. Yeah, I don't think this Asura is going to be able to uh, pull it out on its own, that's for sure. Sometimes it can, but I think you generally want Dark Shift for like the solo carry Asura. Back for another go round, but still not going to be enough. Almost takes almost out. killed Bard, yeah. 
it's, it's interesting because Darnation, while it's all physical, it has very good elemental coverage. So it's, uh, I, I guess it was enough to, to pull out there. Yeah, Citrine evens it up. We're at one game apiece now, heading into game three. We see the Dragons come back out, and now we see a more might oriented team on PT's side coming out. A lot of the same ones we saw last round. Yeah, both these players went for like a might team, and now we're seeing both of them have like a Ninki Naka based team. It's, uh, it's very interesting. There's some decent overlap on both teams. On both players' teams, I should yeah. say. Yeah, this, like we see here, PT decided to go with four of the same mons we just saw in the, the Might team. But there's more of a channeling balance focus here because we've got the uh, the RG. Yeah, Dodo also has channeling balance, which I think not a lot of people pay attention to. Yeah. Uh, just because it doesn't really have any other channel synergy, but it, it fits in nicely with Kanko and Mega Ra. Uh, yeah, uh, makes oh, it a good choice. with Kanko. Because uh, Kanko benefits from the uh, the wildlife preservation as well. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And, and Dodo, just in general, is a very good healer. It's got yeah. passive debuff removal if needed. But you know, if you expect some incidental debuff um, being applied. Yeah, and you can absolutely yeah. just uh, go with either shift depending on matchup too, which is always yeah, good. yeah. It it's it's relatively flexible in that sense, at least. And then it's and always was... got taunt, which you can just cheat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Taunt can just steal games. It's, um, I think Dota's very underrated. Yeah. That's one of the nice things about this format, too, is because it gives a chance for, for mons like uh, Dodo to show up in some archetypes that they might not normally be in, like channeling balance. That's true. That's true. Um, oh, this feels like a half might, half channeling team, right? Because you've still got uh, Goblin, Goblin King, who doesn't really have much uh, channel synergy at all. Um, although Darnation probably appreciates it for the mana, because that usually is a struggle. Yeah, I've always felt that Darnation was a really solid choice for channeling balance, even in unrestricted formats. So, and of course, you know, the, the, the core of Kanko Mega Rock is so strong as it is. Yeah, those two are just made to work together. Yeah. All right, so we see the dragons coming out again. They're going to give it another shot. And side game. Naka face off. Yeah. Showdown of the Swamp Dragons here. And PT's gonna lose Ninki Naka right away, so that's an early blow there. Yeah, it's a quick kill for um, Citrine there. Although I wonder, maybe taking down uh, Monk and Azarak would probably could possibly help just because there's so much disruption that they provide. Monk with combat guard, and Azerac with all the dodge and blind that it applies. Yeah. I mean, when you when you have Ninky Nanka and Ninky as your attackers, you do at least have Aqua Blast on both of them, so you can avoid a little bit of that. Um, but we'll see how it, how it goes here. Oh, there's also Boulder on the... Um, at Draco Noir. Yeah, Boulder Toss is a solid option to have here, for sure. And you see the, the combo building <laughs> Boulder Toss. A bold choice. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's just so much see, damage, even going second. Yeah. You see how tanky Goblin Hood is there, the way it took that attack after, well, not, a, not the most combo meter ever since the Boulder Toss was used, but still. But it's still a fully set up Ninky, right? Yeah. Or almost fully Ninky set up. Ninky does very good damage normally. We've seen it before in, in other matchups here. Yeah, yeah, last game, or last time, I should say, that the Dragon Team was brought out, it, it put in good work. Yeah. There's a fair bit more disruption on, on PD's side with uh, Dracozil spreading debuffs and Azerac spreading stacks and yeah. stealing buffs. Yeah, uh, I think the Jill long coming game out, probably the blind coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, Scorch doesn't really have a good way to remove stacks, even though it's the only healer. It doesn't, it doesn't really have any stack removal. Yeah, Scorch is an absolutely phenomenal buffer, which we we saw in that first turn how much damage it managed to uh, put out onto the the Nikki Nanka, but it doesn't offer as much of the uh, debuff help as 
might need sometimes. Yeah, and there's no mighty boost or sorceress boost here to passively remove some of those stacks. And it's just going to make um, Draco Noir have trouble picking up these kills, even with uh, super effective attacks. Because it can super effectively hit any of the three monsters on the field, but if it yeah. can't hit anything, it's just not going to be putting in enough damage, especially with Draco's all spreading barrier. Make everything look at all the, here. All the buffs on, on PT's side right now, everything has poor barrier, it looks like. So there's a. Yeah. It's tough to break through all that. I suspect we're going to see a kill on. Oh, we did see a kill on Draco's all. Will it be enough to get the kill on one of the other monsters here? This is going to be. This is going to be. Yeah, determine the game, most likely. Yeah. That sliver of life and all the dodges, it doesn't even take any health damage. That is wild. Yeah, it was 39% dodge chance, and there were no blind stacks on yeah. uh, Draco Grant because it came in fresh, so that was just all pure dodge. Um, yeah, Hood can be very, very elusive. Yeah, it's got um, one stack of agility, it's got the extra dodge from Azarak, I think, right? Uh, no, that only affects. Oh, that only spirits? Yeah. yeah. Now it's right, down to right. 3 to 2. So PT's in full position here. We'll see if we knock. Oh, all those dodges. Wow. Hood is hanging in like a champion. Yeah, Draco Noir, uh, Draco Grand does have a way to bypass dodge, but it's a magical attack, which yeah. uh, Goblin on Hood just resists. Making this, yeah, an uphill battle. Yeah, and it sort of like mixture of things there. Yeah, very strong damage there. So PT takes the set three to one. Well yeah, played. this is a uh, very played. interesting. Both yeah. teams had, like, both players had a lot of overlap in their teams. Yeah. Um, I guess there were certain strong cores that were identified by both players with the Ninky Nanka and the sidekick stuff going on. Um, and obviously Mega Rock, which which <laughs> which Kanko yeah. uh, put in a lot of work for both players. Yeah, and it was nice to see both players kind of approach these cores in different ways too. Like there was a lot of uniqueness in these teams, so I love seeing. Yeah, them. for sure. Uh, seeing Goblin King in a uh, channel bounce core was was interesting for sure. Yeah, we didn't really get to see him do anything, but he was there. So. He was there. He was a moral support. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you again next time. Commentary was provided by Flowing Jeffawa and Primer Dimer.